Hello, I'm Tom Hills, Senior Vice President at Laudio, and welcome to Laudio's Frontline Community. Today's topic is Agile Decision Making in Times of Crisis, and with me is Pam Arlotto, CEO of Maestro Strategies. Pam advises the CEOs and senior leaders about practical approaches to digital transformation and innovation in healthcare. Pam, we really appreciate your joining us today, your participation in this frontline community, and your words of advice for leaders at this especially critical time in healthcare. Pam? Thank you, Tom. The COVID crisis is challenging our industry like never before. During these uncertain times, we've got very little time to think and very little time to get input uh, before we make decisions. And often our hospital and physician practice and nursing home leaders are, are dealing with issues when they have no idea what's around the corner and yet they have to improvise and respond in very innovative and creative ways. Um, so today I'm going to share with you uh, a decision-making framework called the Cunefin framework. This was developed um, in the 2000s, the early 2000s at IBM, and I have never seen a time uh, more suited um, than today uh, for using this framework to help us understand that leaders have to respond in uncertain times differently than they would in routine day in and day out um, times. And that our decision making style should be different when we're facing crises and during chaotic times or even complex times than when we're in our routine daily operational mode. So let's look at this framework. Um, on the right hand side, you see limited change. And on the left hand side, you see multi dimensional complex change. And so let's start on the bottom right quadrant. And this is the simple quadrant or the world of best practices. And in this world, we know what we know. We have been very successful over the years making decisions this way. Um, in nursing, the great example is. You know the role, um, you know the type of decisions a staff nurse can make versus a charge nurse, versus a nurse manager, et cetera. And um, it's very, very straightforward. We know what we know. Moving into the complicated quadrant, this is the world of good practices. Uh, we know almost all of the unknowns, but there are multiple right answers to these situations. We may put together a team, bring together a number of experts to sort through um, the right decision and the right path. Um, a great example here would be putting a magnet team together to uh, bring together different people from different units and different parts of the organization to put together a plan. If we move over to the left-hand side or that world of uncertainty, um, let's focus on the top left quadrant initially. This is the world of complexity, when we don't know what we don't know. There are so many problems that need exploration, they may need experimentation, and we have to collaborate with a number of people to really um, resolve those problems and make decisions. On the bottom left-hand side, this is the world of crisis and chaos. We need immediate, rapid response. We have to create no novel or novel, as I heard someone say that, um, today, practices. Um, and not, we, there's no way we can know all of the answers to all of the decisions we have to make. Uh, solutions don't have to be perfect. We just need to act. Two great examples of this scenario, 9-11 and Katrina. We had to act. We're gonna talk more about this um, quadrant in a few minutes. Finally in the center is the confused quadrant or the confused state. In this category, the decision maker may be distracted. They're not really paying attention and they may not even be aware there is a decision to be made or a problem to be solved. 
And before we move into the world of um, COVID-19, I'd like to use a couple of traditional healthcare examples to really show the differences in these decision-making styles. So let's think about an emergency department or emergency services group. And on the bottom right-hand side, we have um, a patient come in with a fracture of some sort. In this situation, it looks like this uh, individual has broken a finger or a hand. And we know what to do. We, we take an image, uh, we treat the, the break, we give them instruction and send them on their merry way. In the complicated sector, um, we have a, a patient who has fallen, an elderly patient, and we're not quite sure, did she just trip and fall or would, was one of her multiple chronic conditions, um, are there, is there some broader treatment we need to do that maybe have impacted the fall? So we have to bring in an expert, to do some tests, ask some questions to explore one of multiple potential um, answers and problems to be solved. In the complex arena, uh, we deal with this every day through triage. We have different patients show up in the waiting room and we have to get some information and some data. And then we have to assess who goes first, who goes next, and put together a different combination and permutation of answers based on the patterns that we're seeing by time of day and kind of in real time. Because we all know what, what's in the waiting room at midnight is very different than nine o'clock in the morning. But then the, finally, the chaotic quadrant. This is um, best ex explained when you think of a tornado hitting the hospital or a multi-car uh, collision on an interstate. And we have to rapidly change the way we're working. We have to potentially set up new sites to see the patients. And we have to do what healthcare actually does very well. We have to respond immediately based on what's happening at that moment in time, kind of running and gunning. And let's look at each one of these a little bit more so we can think about the way we make decisions, whether we're a frontline staff person or an executive, because these really apply to all of us. In that simple decision-making style, we sense that there is a decision that has to be made. We immediately categorize it. Well, I've made this decision 100 times before, so it's this type of decision, and we respond or act. It's based on our expertise, is based on what's made us successful historically. Usually we're in command and control, so I make a decision and then other type of decisions my boss might make. We don't need much information because we've seen this a gazillion times. It's almost like a recipe. And then in this situation, we don't communicate a lot because everybody knows what we're gonna do because they've seen it a hundred times before too. In that complicated decision making, so that's that upper right hand side of the quadrant, we once again recognize we have to make a decision, but we need maybe need to analyze the multiple options that we have and then we respond. So we bring in experts. Uh, often this is in healthcare uh, something we do quite frequently where we, we get people around a table and we make a consensus based decision. Um, if we use data here, it's to validate that consensus, to validate kind of what we already knew in our gut was one of multiple, and it might help us prioritize our decisions. And we target the communication to stakeholders that ultimately might be involved in that decision. In the complex area, we may not really understand the problem because once again we remember we don't know what we don't know so we have to do some analysis before we can even begin to clarify the problems to be solved and then once we've done that we can we can respond this is where we've got a lot of unpredictable a lot of unpredictable situations a lot of um of uh challenges and change and we have to focus on pattern recognition. We may experiment, we may do some trial and error. And as we're all hearing, analytics is becoming more and more important and it can help us in this area. Um, we may design intentionally new ways of working. We may partner with others and we've got to do a lot of communication, a lot of collaboration, a lot of outreach in this, in this arena. Finally, back to that chaotic area. 
turbulence, too much to do, many t decisions to make, no time to get any input from anybody. You need directive, command and control, decision making, bring order to a situation, strong action bias. Look for what works instead of seeking the right answers. It doesn't have to be perfect. Clear broadcast communications to all. So let's step back a minute and think about some of the challenges and barriers we in healthcare experience with, with the decisions we make on a daily basis. Interestingly, healthcare organizations almost always want to apply that simple approach to every situation. And as we're seeing, it doesn't always work the best. When we're in an uncertain um, environment, and we want to apply a simple approach, that can almost sometimes lead to a decision paralysis, which in itself becomes a decision. And interestingly, we've seen this quite a bit in healthcare in the last few years where organizations are trying to innovate, whether it be value-based care, um, using new technology, um, setting up um, different ways of working. And that innovation itself can, make the organization feel like they're in chaos. But interestingly, and we're seeing this right now with COVID, chaos can drive innovation and creativity that we can't do in other, um, in other times. And in fact, with COVID-19 today, we're seeing unchartered territory. And one of my clients recently said, who the heck knows? I think that really describes where we are today in, in, in some respect. But, but let's apply this framework to COVID. And let's start with that confused kind of middle, middle section. And in that, we were, many of us didn't even realize, I mean, when it was hitting China, before there was a case in the United States, nobody really, um, thought about the impact of the virus. Um, most didn't realize they were confused, but once they started waking up and we started seeing the escalation of cases here, we always felt we were several steps behind what we should have been doing. And first, let's admit, we were in a little bit of shock. But then full crisis mode kicked in. And we've seen this across our communities, across our governments, um, we learned about hand washing, we learned about social distancing. These were all fairly rapidly deployed. We saw cancellation of major conferences and sporting events that were just unheard of. We saw mandatory closing of schools, stay at home orders, healthcare prepared for the surge, and we have been seeing broad scale innovation, response to the PPE shortage, ventilator shortage, We've seen regulations being streamlined, new partnerships created, and it's been fascinating. As we move, um, oops, I went the wrong way, sorry about that. Um, as we move now, we're seeing things like telehealth, which is a great example of innovation that occurs during times of crisis. Um, telehealth, people have been trying to roll this out for years, and lots of, um, uh, pushback, lots of can't do it, it won't work, um, little adoption, but you, there are story after story in the past few weeks of organizations that decided on Friday and went live on Monday and immediately changed the way they were delivering care. You see some of the, the statistics on the side of organizations who had it already and how they just ramped up and then organizations that had not deployed it, who in, in a matter of days rolled out telehealth, while at the same time reducing all elective procedures, all site-based care. Um, I'm hearing emergency departments for the most part in many cities are empty right now, which is just unheard of. So we are now getting to the point that for many, we say we're getting past the initial surge, and we've got to start planning the next stage. We, remember, don't know what we don't know about this stage. We're hearing, while it would be nice if things would just go back to normal immediately, we kind of recognize that won't happen. The genie's out of the bottle with telehealth. 
um, a lot of unemployed um, individuals who previously had may still have insurance but won't don't want to bear the burden of the copay. Um, also, are patients really not fearful? Are they really ready to come back to healthcare facilities where they may be exposed when they've been been told to shelter in place? So we need data. We need to look at the patterns. We need to think about things a little bit differently, and we need some time to experiment, to explore, to do some trial and error, but use that data to inform the decisions and help us see the path forward. So allow those patterns to emerge, and then let's see if we can innovate a very new and different type of approach to healthcare that may not be exactly the crisis mode, but may be our future um, path in, in as we the next few years as we go forward. The thing to recognize though, for sure, is we are gonna be going back and forth between these two sectors. And what I would encourage each of you to do is pause for a moment and say, is this, it may feel chaotic, but is it something that I do have the time to get some data, to do some experimentation, to learn, or is this one of those that just needs that immediate directive decision, that needs that bias toward action? And those, that will help us get through the next few months um, as we come out of this and maybe go through some um, peaks and valleys. So just kind of in summary, the kind of framework gives us a strategic lens to recognize that each problem isn't solved the same way. Decision making styles should be different and data and analytics can be extremely valuable, especially in that complex category. Um, as we're um, going through the next few months, we're gonna quickly, hopefully move from, we've been confused, we got into chaotic, we're going to complex, but we'll be back and forth between complex and chaotic, hopefully not back to confused. But I'd ask you each to think um, within your own organizations, with your, within your own roles, what triggers will help you in advance recognize the shift between chaotic and complex. So you can say, oh, this is a complex decision, or oh no, I should just um, make a, a directive rapid fire bias toward action decision. Great, thanks so much, Pam. This is really helpful. And it helps us frame for all of us what kinds of decision frameworks we need to be making as the environment continues to change quickly around us. Thank you, Tom.